Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. I'm back from a long hiatus, so I want to say thank you guys for sticking with me. And it is good to be back. Today, I've got an Imperial Fist Dreadnought. Hey guys, 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 check this out. It's an Imperial Fist Bump. <laughs> uh, so I spent most of the summer working on my Golden Demon entry, which ended up in the top five, but not the top three. I learned a lot while painting it, and I'm going to recreate a simpler version for a future tutorial. Ever since game day, I've been focusing on improving my painting to a competition level, so I've had less time for YouTube. But I'm more excited than ever about painting, so I am going to make time for videos as much as I can. I've had a lot of requests for Imperial Fist tutorials, and I've always shied away because I don't care for the traditional scheme. The bright yellow and red looks cartoony and makes me want to eat cheeseburgers. So I wanted a yellow scheme without being in your face yellow. I did this by burying my saturated bright yellow, which is VGC sun yellow, between desaturated somewhat muted colors like the bloodstone and gold yellow mix and lemon yellow. The result is undeniably yellow, but it doesn't look like I painted it with a highlighter. Some Imperial Fist purists may not care for this particular palette, but to me it fits the 40k universe better. I used blue in my brightest highlight to help balance the warm palette. To determine if a color is warm or cool, take a color wheel and split it down the middle. Generally speaking, reds, oranges, and yellows are warm, while greens, blues, and violets are considered cool. In addition to giving various feelings to the viewer, warm colors appear closer, or almost as if they advance toward the viewer, while cool colors appear to recede or seem farther away. The same is true of value. Darker colors appear closer, and lighter colors appear farther. Keeping the dark, warm colors at the bottom, and the bright, cool colors at the top, helps add volume to the dreadnought, especially on the front panel that slopes toward the viewer.
The term color theory sounds a bit overcomplicated for what it really is. It's pretty basic stuff. And the first step to getting a hold of color theory is to understand the color wheel. Now there are tons of uses for a color wheel, but let's take a look at how it's used to create four basic color schemes. A monochromatic color scheme uses one color and varies only in saturation and value. It's a balanced and aesthetically pleasing look, but it's hard to pull off on a miniature and obviously lacks color contrast. An analogous color scheme uses colors right next to each other on the color wheel. It's a bit richer than a monochromatic scheme, but minis will still lack the contrast that helps them pop off the table. A complementary color scheme uses colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. This provides the maximum color contrast and really draws in the eye. The closer the colors are used to each other, the greater the contrast. On this model, I'm using a triadic color scheme, which consists of three colors spaced equally on the color wheel. The contrast isn't as strong as in a complementary scheme, but it's still a high contrast look with enough, but not too many, colors to draw in the eye. Obviously, I have to keep yellows and reds to make the model fit with the Imperial Fist Army, so to achieve a triadic scheme, I add blue-green and violet to the metallics. These colors create a nice triad with the armor and also help cool down the warm yellow palette. There's more to color theory, but nothing terribly challenging. Give it a quick Google search and a few minutes of reading, and you'll have a better understanding of why some color schemes work and some color schemes don't. You'll also score major points with your wife when you can help her pick out accessories to match her outfits. This Dreadnought is up for auction on eBay's Giving Works program, and 100% of the final sale will benefit the American Cancer Society. Bidding starts at $25, and I will cover the cost of shipping. So check out the link in the description, and consider sharing it with your friends. And speaking of links in the description, you can follow a link to schnauzerfaceminis.com, where you can download this video, and all my videos, in free 1080p QuickTime files. And finally, Follow a link in the description to my Facebook page. Now I've got like 7,000 subscribers on YouTube, but only about 300 Facebook likes. What's the deal? My mom has more Facebook friends than I do. No offense mom, but what the heck? Like my Facebook page guys. For the base, I use bricks from Pegasus Hobbies and various bits from World War II and train kits. The bricks are already red, but they're too uniform to be used unpainted. I did some pre-shading with black and white, and then sprayed thin reds over them. This isn't the best way to do bricks, painting each by hand would get a better result, 
but it works for gaming pieces. the same purple and blue-green colors in the metallics on the base. This will help to unify the color scheme from top to bottom. Finally, I make a wash using pigments and pull them on the base. When the water evaporates, it'll leave behind a really nice dusty finish. And that's it for this model. Again, thank you guys for sticking with me. I really am going to get videos out more regularly. And if you're interested, please check out the eBay auction. It's for a great cause, and you guys have really stepped up to help the nonprofits this year. You all have raised nearly $1,000 for charities this year through Schnauzer Face Auctions, and I truly, truly thank you guys for that. So be good to each other and thanks for watching. Yeah.